Oh, Jenny. Look at this big boy. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's full grown. They're all in these trees. Yeah. They're well, full blooded, so they must sit out in the open to get their body temperature warmed up. Yeah, but he's got a and huge dew flap. Where they cannot get warmed up, they would never feed because the food they eat would not digest. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just order it for later. Monkey River Village and the restaurant to order lunch. Earlier this morning when we left from Alta Placencia Peninsula for more pick you guys up at the gas station, we came 14 miles to the south. We're now in the Toledo district, most southern district in Belize. Right here in Monkey River, we're only about 45 miles away from southern border with Belize and Guatemala. We're also out in the rainforest. Over here in the rainforest, we get over 200 inches of rain each year. Our rainy season starts around June, goes up to about November, where we get a lot of rain, but mostly at nighttime. From November on to about February, it rains off and on. February to June, that's our dry season, where we get little to no rain at all. Dry season is the warmest time of the year for us. Temperature stays within 80 to 100 degree with 85% humidity where it gets pretty hot and humid in the middle of the dry season. Even though the dry season is hot and humid, it's still a beautifulest time in Belize. All trees, shrub, orchid bloom some point of the dry season. So in our dry season, it's so much more colorful, smells a lot better with the odor from all the different trees bloom. It is also one of the few rivers in Belize flows fresh water all the way to the mouth of Monkey River. That's one reason you never find red mangrove, like the plant that grows on the coast, growing off the bank system of Monkey River. Red mangrove grows best in salt or rockish water. Okay, we call these grass cane, nothing compared like sugar cane, more like bamboo. Hard and hollow in the inside of the grass. Many years ago, most older guys living in the rainforest they used to harvest these grass, tie them together to build a wall of their huts. They also harvest fronds off palm trees to build thatch roof system. So for most older guys, their entire home were made from all material from right over here in the rainforest. Back then, choose to build a home didn't cost much, but they had to put a lot of labor in it, a lot of hard work. You would find some Americans would call these wild cane pampas grass. Mm -hmm. They say it resembles the grass they have in the U.S. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. Your mom has a big stand yeah. of it right at her driveway. These wild cane grows best in parts of the country that gets over 100 inches of rain, so they're sort of a water plant. See the plant with the white and red flower? Yes. yes. Moho tree. After the flower, the flower is yellow. After it's cross pollinated, it turns red. Oh. These moho trees, they play pretty much the same role as the red mangrove does for the banks. For the banks. They have branches and root system in the river, which protects the river bank from eroding. And among the branches and roots of these trees, work as a spawning habitat for the fishes that live in the river. And the bark off that moho tree strips off real easily. So, Back when the Olo guys didn't have rope, that's what they used for rope. They yeah. strip the bark off the tree, you can strip it maybe 20, 30 feet long. And whatever width you want, you just cut it that width, and when you start rip, stripping it off, it will come off that width. Wow. And it's just that flexible. Yeah, wow. flexible, like when they want it real strong, they braid it like a hair braid. Yeah, that's what they use. Look like fungus or moss. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, there's a bat literally on the side of that tree. Look. Oh, 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 oh. Look at him upside down. See his yeah. little face, huh? Yeah. They're called proboscis or long nose. Oh, those are awesome looking. Wow. Guys, over here in the rainforest, I must say in southern Belize, Monkey River and Placencia Village both got hit by Hurricane Iris. 8 of October 201. Where the morning after Iris, there wasn't even one single green leaf and any remaining standing tree trunks in the rainforest. The morning after that hurricane, it was like a big fire passed by. 
where everything was just brown for as far as your eyes could see. There were a few thousand tree trunks standing out the forest floor. Trunks didn't got knocked over by the strong wind, but all branches and leaves got stripped from the trunk of those trees. It took at least a month after iris before vegetation starts to grow back in the rainforest. Where all these vegetation have all grown back since 201. Where the vegetation in the rainforest it is growing back a lot faster than anyone have ever expected it to. Both Monkey River and Placencia Village got destroyed by iris. Oh, yeah, no problem. It didn't matter the size of the building as long as it was made yeah, from wood, it's not blown to bits. No. Iris made landfall with 185 mile an hour sustainable wind, rushes over 200 mile an hour. Most guys outside of the country of Belize never heard of Iris because it was right after 9 11. There were no media coverage of that hurricane at all. It made landfall pretty much a category 5. Whoa. Upstairs of the building where you guys are having seen like that, it'll be a family. Or that's a young male that got kicked out of his family. Oh, look at him walking. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Whenever an uh, immature male become fully mature, the dominant male knows it. So they fight to be the leader of the family. Most of the time, the full male, I just heard he it. just kicked that young male out of his family. That's one way to stop inbreeding in their family. I so just, whenever a young male get kicked out of his family, he must live by himself two to three years. So that way he get bigger and stronger. He will then channel the leader from another family. But if that time he still can't kick a dominant male out of the family, he might have enough strength to take one or two young girls with him. So that way he can start to have his own family, start having his own territory. I swear I've heard a couple howls. Uh, yeah. They don't have babies every year. How the monkeys have babies every three years. It is because of a mother monkey would nurse her young for over 18 months, have six month gestation period. You hear him? Whenever you see a single monkey, it's a young male that got kicked out of his family. Whenever an old male get that. kicked out, that? one or two of his favorite girls would move out with him. Baby, here, use these. Yeah, you, yeah, use the binoculars. Get a good view. That is a huge iguana back there with him. Oh, that iguana is huge. Yeah, come on. Check this out. If that monkey will try and go ahead in the branch, the iguana is on, the iguana will try to whip it. Oh, really? You want no part of an iguana. The iguana is trying to whop the, try to lash the monkey with the tail. And is that a howler? That's a black howler. It's the fronds of those same Kuhun palm trees. Older guys in southern Belize would harvest to build tax roof system. They come over here in the rainforest, harvesting the frond off those palm trees on full moon. They choose to harvest the palm frond on a full moon because only in a full moon will the palm tree produce a lot of sap in the palm frond. Harvesting the palm frond then the sap dries inside the front and work as termite resistant. So that way the older guys build a good thatch for the loss within eight to 10 years. If not harvest in full moon, termite can ruin the roof within two to three year time. A lot of guys would ask who the first guys to figure that out. I'm not sure. I think it's a Mayans. I'm pretty sure it took a couple decades to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was an Arakari flying yeah. across. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I see that one. Oh, yeah, his Our mouth's wide open. Guys, so to prevent from overheating, crop must open your mouth to regulate your body temperature, or else it can overheat and die. Look at his mouth. The difference between an alligator and a crocodile. These crocodiles, the mouth are more long and pointed, and when the crop closes the mouth, you can still see the outer layer of the feet. Oh. Alligators are the mouth uh, are more wrong, and when the alligator calls the mouth, you can't. Uh -huh. yeah, it's a magnificent all butterfly. 
Guys, we're hiking on a narrow trail. So sometimes you may find yourself want to hold on to a tree trunk. Before holding on to any of these trees over here, look at the trunk first. Just to make sure the trunk wouldn't have any sharp spikes on it, or the trunk wouldn't be moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you heard about the, uh, you have to use the restroom, they said look for moving roots. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Big tree up front on the right, guys. This is a strangler fig. Strangler figs are a parasitic plant. Just can't grow off the forest floor. So the seed of these fig trees get carried up in the canopy of a palm by bird, howler monkey, or some critter. You guys wait right here one second. So this is I was about to say, uh, where are you going? Crap. Where are you going? A big blue crab stuck in a hole. Oh. oh, really? Yeah. You know what you do? You can reach in and pull it out. Well, you yeah, saw but them. these strangler fig guys, they start to grow in the canopy of a palm, sending roots to the forest floor. As soon wow. as the roots of that fig tree reaches the forest floor, it grows like it's on steroids. Wow. In less oh, than 20 wow. years time, it normally strangles uh, and kills the palm tree. Wow. But before that strangler fig kill the palm, the tree has to be certain that the roots are strong enough to stand on their own. Because when the roots of that palm die, when the trunk of the palm die and rot, the roots of the strangler fig will then become the trunk of that fig tree. Oh. That creates a home over here for a lot of critters. Box, snakes, possum, parker pine, and a lot more. Termite nest up there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh wow. There's lunch. Even in northern parts of Belize, guys, termite put their colony beneath the forest floor. In southern Belize, we get so much rain, termite must put that colony a few feet above the forest floor. So that way when the river floods the rainforest, colony of these termites will still be drying out the water. They're good eating. You said it depends on what they've been eating. Yeah. Termite have a lot of protein to them. As kids, we used to use them as chicken food. Yeah, on our hike the other day, they pinched it and yeah. we put them on our fingers and ate them. Yeah, they're oh. pretty good eating. <laughs> if you're a lass over here in the rainforest, you can survive in termite for a few days. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of protein. See these vines here, guys, with the covered in spike? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. You find the Mayans have knitted basket to sell. Most Ooh. of it is made from these same spiky vine. You get a machete, shave off the spike. The trunk of that vine is so flexible, you can pretty much make a knot with it and it won't break. Wow. See that spider up there in that web? Oh, yes, I do. Golden silk or banana spider. Oh. Wait, 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 what is that? I say, what did you say, golden? Where? Golden uh, silk or banana spider. The giant spiders skylight it right above my head. See it? Right there. It's a huge freaking spider. I don't see it either. I don't like need it. Look, all right, see this branch here? Look oh, right oh, in the middle. Okay, okay, now oh, yeah, I see got it. Him. Okay, got I'm going to skylight it. Us. Yeah, I guess this is uh, some. If you this come guy. out a little more, then the. Here, let me move. I'm not a fan of spiders. <laughs> don't like spiders very much. Yeah. Nope. They just builds the strongest web in the rainforest. The web of that spider is strong enough to catch a little bird. Oh, wow. And whatever gets tied up in that web is lunch. <laughs> All the monkeys spend 75% of the day resting, guys. So I'm just trying to make sure that we didn't walk right under a tree. When they're just relaxing in the canopy of a tree, not moving much, you can walk right under them and never get to see them. When they're active moving in the vegetation, they're noisy. Is there a time of day they're more active? or? Early morning, late in the afternoon. They spend 75% of the day resting though. Because they're all black, they don't move around too much in the heat of the day. Be careful right here guys, more spikes in that one. Okay, right there. But well, see this, these, see this vine here, right here, guys, with these thorns on it. Mm -hmm. It's locally known. Well, it's a water liana, locally known as a tiger nail because of the thorns on it. 
But if you get lost in a rainforest, you can get a vine maybe three times in circumference of this one. Out of a foot of vine, you can get one liter of purified water. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Another one of these spike vines. Yep. That's a water liana right there. You bought, like, when we first started doing these trails, we used to hack it, give the guys to drink. It's so cool and refreshing. But sometimes the vine is three, two, three hundred feet long up in the forest floor and you hack it from the bottom, you end up, you end up killing the vine. Mm. Because where it's attached to the forest floor, get cut off. So the vine ends up dying after a few months. By walking over here, guys, in the rainforest, you may see vegetation used at home as house plants. Mm -hmm. Here we have Diffenbachia. Use a lot for houseplant. Any of you guys have Diffenbachia as houseplant? You have I've to be careful with pigs or pets chewing on the leaf of that plant. The leaf of a Diffenbachia have a lot of toxin in it. Oh, it doesn't wow. have enough toxin to kill a human being, but it makes a human dumb for a while. Paralyzes your throat. Oh, wow. Over here in Belize, locally known as dumb cane or modern law plant. Uh, mother-in-law plant. Mother -in -law say, have a mother-in-law talking too much? Make <laughs> this right here, guys, is the root of a strangler fig just got to the forest floor right oh, here. Wow. Wow. We return over here in another 15, 20 years. It will be as big as that one we saw when it first came in. Wow. Yeah, a little toad. <clears throat> you guys see this trunk up front? Have the box stripping off it, the big red trunk. Mm -hmm. This, if you guys look around, most trees have two to three vines wrapping around the trunk. Yeah. Gumbalimba tree have its own unique way of stripping bark. So you never find a vine wrapping around the trunk of that tree. As vines start to wrap mm -hmm. around the trunk, it just keeps stripping bark. That vine keeps falling back to the forest floor. Oh, wow. It's one of the best medicinal plants we have in a rainforest. The sap of that tree has a lot of antibiotic in it. So whenever native folks have rash in their skin, take off a piece of the bark, soak it in some water, rinse their skin with it. If they have infection, then they'll drink the water off the bark of that tree. Wow. It's pretty good. This one here? Yeah. yeah. The reason why there's so much hack in that tree, like you put a hack on it, come back 45 minutes to an hour, they'll have a white sop where you yeah. chopped it. I saw the sap That sop, if you get bit by, an, by bugs and saw red swelled up and itchy, you rub the sop on it, it reduces the itch and swelling from the bug bite. These gumbo limon trees are also used a lot to make living lawn markers because you can cut both ends of the trunk of this tree, stuck it into a hole, and it starts to grow again. So guys plant it at the corner of their property where you can see from that tree to that tree is mine. Wow. Mm -hmm. Don't even looking for your lawn mark. <laughs> See guys, another reason why the older guys use these palm fronds, it goes right across the building without even joining in the middle. It goes 30 to 40 feet long. Yeah, look at that nice shade here. Right. Big trunk on the right, guys. Oh, wow. Ficus tree. Oh, oh wow. Same type of ficus. They use as house, house plants. plants. Yeah. They get 175 feet tall over here. Change. One of the monkey's most place. favorite trees. That's an incredible ficus. Most native plants have fruits once a year. Ficus tree have fruits two to three times a year. Monkey loves to feed on fruit and fresh new leaf. Oh God, here's a little, <laughs> a little crab. A tiny little crab on this. I did not anticipate. All those ones, mangrove crab. The little bitty small ones? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're more common in the mangrove trees along the coastline. Oh, I heard, oh, a, I heard a whole roar. We have a blue land crab. A crab have a sky blue color, grows 18 to 20 inches. Oh, wow. They're pretty good eating. To me, they're much better than sea crab. Oh. They don't have that fish rank to it. And the meat is sweeter. I swear I heard a roar a second ago. Not his, but... Yeah, I yeah. too in the distance. Oh yeah, sometimes you do hear a roaring off in the distance. Yeah. Miles away. Big hole in the right, right there. Okay. Big hole. Those big holes in the forest floor are created 
When the palm tree dies, the root system rot, leaves a big hole in the forest floor. from those brown jays. Yeah. In the States, you guys have blue and green jays. Over here, we just have brown mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. Right there in that branch jumping around. Mm -hmm. Plays the same role. The they, sound, they sound like yeah. blue jays. Eh? Oh, look at that beautiful butterfly. That's a blue morpho. You read about those wow. butterflies, they tell you they no longer migrate this far south. <laughs> well, I tell, I'd say they're wrong. I just saw. Them. I would say these ones we have a residence of the leaves. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you look down the crab hole, you'd see a big crab stuck in the down in the bottom. But most of the crab drudge those holes eight to ten feet deep. Oh. It makes it impossible for Jeez. anyone to just dig them out that hole. Eight to ten feet. Deep. Yeah. So in the wet season, when it rained that much, the crab hole get filled up with water. Only then will those crabs leave the safety of that hole, start climbing tree trunks to get out the water. And at that time, you'll find a bunch of guys catching these land crabs over here. To me, they're a lot better than any sea crab. And these are the holes created when the palm tree uh -huh. die, the root system leaves that big hole. Get that water? You mm -hmm. smell right here? Smell of the monkeys. They were somewhere around here this morning or late yesterday. Mm -hmm. You see in Puda Market territory. Mm -hmm. Have that livestock smell to it. Mm -hmm. I do smell it. Yeah. That was yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Oh! Let's see if That's can a monkey guys. call, right? That's a monkey, yeah. Let's see if we can get this crap out. <laughs> nah, he's laying there, though. We got it. Tim. Did you get it? Yep. <gasps> oh. <gasps> That's a big pincher. <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah. Robert, wow. get that. See, the big thing. pincher tips them over sometimes. The pincher gets so big, guys, that sometimes the pincher is too big for the crab to be carrying that pincher. Have to make a few steps and drag that pincher as you move along. So that's, that's why he only has one land left crab. Yeah. Yeah. right back into his hole. Take, the other one just fell off. The, yeah, yeah, the little one, but it's they way smaller. They really release that pincher and regrow it in a few months. That was cool. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> they always have a big and a small pincher. Oh, that was cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. I should have got that pretty That good. was pretty badass, I got to say. <laughs> yeah, my uncle taught me to do that from a very young age. Whoa! Yeah, it's like say, how do you, you avoid? It? How do you avoid that pincher, man? Yeah, it's hard, but yeah, my uncle taught me. That's the first thing you have to get. That pincher, and move it out the way, or else you get pinched by the pincher of that crab. The crab can hold the tension of that pinch for, say, four or five minutes. Oh. So while it's on the same way, the real release oh. that scared <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> 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 I recorded it. That's the best. <laughs> they just bam, just right in. Yeah, right into it. Oh, listen to that. Oh, oh, those are really large somethings. Hey. Whoa. That's, yeah, that's 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 a big wasp nest right there, Jenny. Those are huge wasps. Yeah, those wasps are very... Like he said. See right there. Look at that guy. Oh, yeah, totally. See, then there's one right here, too. See that one? Oh, Where yeah. is he? See that one right there? Oh, there's one right there. Yeah. Where's there's the one up here? Gu
Step right back. Here, oh, 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 there he is. You guys can wait here. Let me see if we can get Come back here where I am, Jenny. Where's this guy over here? Uh, oh, there he is. Right there. Oh, I saw, I saw the other one move. You see him? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's moving on that branch. Oh, he's... He's there. Oh, he's over to the right a little more. Yeah, you can see him. Right under the bed. You're back. Use it on his balls. That's a big boy. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's noticeable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what you're saying. You, know? you don't miss that. Big, big white bolitas. Yes. <laughs> Some big huevos. Oh, God, he's right over us. Jump on right there. Here. <laughs> Jenny. See him right here, baby? Yeah. He's right up there. He's right above. He's climbing branch to branch. I know, good point. Yeah, there he is, right above us, see? Right. One of the family member guys out this family have a very young baby holding on to either the back or the breast of the female. Oh, you see him climbing? Yeah. Whoa. That's cool. I think there's more in there. There's somebody else moving. Open over here, guys. Yeah. Stand here where I'm standing right here. Yeah, right here you can see a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Spider web. Something spider web. I'm, I don't trust a Belizean spider. If it were a South Carolina spider, I'd trust it, but not a Belizean well, spider. Right here, though. right here, guys. Where I'm, I'm coming. Oh yeah, that spider web is right there. Yeah, yeah. Right there. See him? Oh yeah. Perfect. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Babe, take a picture oh, of it. I want a nice close up. <laughs> oh, at you, not roaring. Yeah. Grunting. Yeah, look, grunt. Oh, yeah, he's coming the long way here. Coming down there. Do you? Going across. He's climbing back up. Oh, there's one right over here, Jenny. Right Jenny, right here. Yeah, Wide open. Okay. See it? It just crossed the. Yeah. It just walked across oh, this thing. Yeah, yeah. so there's one right here, too. Look up above us, right oh, yeah. here. There's one hanging by the Jenny, right, right, right there. there. See right there? Yeah. Oh, I see him moving. There's one right here, over here, right here. Yeah, I see him from right here. Right here. This guy's right here, too. Wait, where is this one? See him? <laughs> he just jumped. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Here, That's oh. the leader for family coming over right there. Oh, is it? Which one? He's the only guy that would roar the dominant male. Above your head. Above your head. Yeah. Where? Walking up. That frond. Right there. Look up right above your head. Yeah. You see his head right here. No, in front a little bit. Look up my yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just barking. Yeah, it's just teasing us more than anything else. Yeah. Oh, but there he is climbing. He's about to jump. Oh, he's hanging. Oh, that's cool. He's looking. Look at him, Jenny. Look at him. He's hanging between the two. He's right over our head right now. Look. Oh, he jumped. Oh, there he is. That's what I'm saying. He leaped. There's another one behind me somewhere right here. Oh, yeah. Here's another one coming across that same branch. Yeah. They're going to be two together. Oh, that's a little one. That's a baby. Yeah, I wonder if there's a baby. Outside. Yeah, that's a little baby. So, look, there's two together now. Yeah, from over there. Well, we're going back this way, guys. We should see some more. Going this way. We're hiking a loop trail. Okay. So, we're not going back and forth in the same direction. Oh, okay. And not around those, whatever those oh, devil hornets. Oh, no, we're not going to those hornets again. The those. Devil hornets? Yeah, right there. See another 
spider right there between the palms. Oh, there's a monkey hanging right there, by there the way. Too, yeah. <laughs> Where? On the tree, right up above. Oh, yeah. I don't see it. Right over there. He's in the, in the distance. See, one arm oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh! Yeah. Yep. <laughs> hanging one arm. Yeah. He's just kind of chilling. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at him. He's just hanging there. He's looking at us. There he is, just checking us out. Well, the one behind us is literally right above us. I know. Oh, that's so You got some good really zoom Yeah, I did, I did, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. did. I really did. See? Yeah, so I was and watching from his, his mouth here. open. See that? Did you get oh, good? good? Let me see. Well, oh, he Jenny. Looked, he, he looked dead at me. Did you get him with the dead at you? Yeah, and with his yeah. mouth open. Oh, that's awesome. These same palm nuts, guys, the older guys used to harvest to get cooking oil. That's before they found out about coconut. Yeah. Oh. Coconuts, they're not native to Belize. When these cuhoon aren't native. Just the cuhoon nuts are so much smaller, and the shell is about a half inch thick. So it made it impossible for the older guys to just hack it open with a machete. Mm -hmm. They made a special design nutcracker, which they used to crack the hard shell. Then they beat the flump and extract the oil. Use the oil as cooking oil. A lot of work, huh? Yeah. That's a yeah. All the guys they start making cooking oil from coconut when they found out about it. Where did the coconut from? Oh, Western right uh, Pacific. Really. Oh, okay. oh, look at oh, oh, turtle, tortoise. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that guy. What's up, bud? He's just chilling. I have literally. I know. Slaughtered myself. And they're eating you. Yeah. You just are more attractive. Mm -hmm. Look, my arms are glistening. I have so much blood around me, but they're still fighting me. Hey. Actually, did you spray your clothes? No. Like her wearing that dark mosquito see his dark clothes as, as a place to hide. They will be attracted to you because of oh, your clothes. They need to get your clothes. That's great. I know. I, <laughs> Thanks for I the information. You that that's helpful. Night, Sorry, bad. I forgot to. No, to no, no, I'm, 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 I'm glad to have it now. You meet oh. her back. I forgot, I normally uh, no, it's anyone fine. with black clothes or yeah. any dark clothes they before coming to, to make light. sure to get your clothes. That's the reason why they keep hovering okay. around you. Mosquitoes see something dark as a place to hide. So when they pitch on it, they're also camouflaged. They're always after a dark. Mm -hmm. Black was my favorite color before I became a tour guide, man. <laughs> <laughs> black shirt, but then you have a swarm of mosquito tracking you at all times. Mm -hmm. You're probably so used to it, though. Oh, yeah, they bite, but it doesn't itch and leave a mark. See, these are leaf cutter ant right here, guys. Oh, yeah. See, these leaf cutter ant right here, guys? Mm -hmm. See, the jaws are so big of these cutter ant that the oh, Mayan use them as titches. When they get a real big cut, oh, I've heard of that. they yeah. guide the jaws of the leaf cutter ant. And then the oh, head has hooks, so it hold 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 keeps the, oh, wow. keep keep the, the skin cut together. together. Yeah, for a couple of days, two, three days. And then that this is a small one. These ants get like two, three times this big. Wow. Some of them, Whoa. some of the cutter ant. So when the the lion they get a big cut, they go to the colony, hit it, and the cutter and the solar ant would be the first out the nest to protect it. So they just let it bite? They just pick oh, a couple spring, of them sure up and see the jaws are so big. See, yeah, it has hooks in it. See the hook yeah. in my skin. I have to take it out pretty much. Oh wow. So then just wow. Like, yeah. That's amazing, huh? He, that's just ingenious. Like you think about. No, no, no. Yeah, how everything is works together. Yeah, yeah they just figure it out. I Listen. Went about it and didn't believe it until I went and spent a weekend with my buddy and his brother got a cut. They just went out to a mom, got a like six, seven big ones. <laughs> yeah, just did a job real good, man. Wow. And then uh, after a three days time, they took it off and the cut was stick together. And then you can just use whatever, like you touch up yeah. 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 That yeah. was smart. Yeah. With the hood. Careful right here. The leaf cutter ant trail. Jeremy? Huh? Why go for a dog in the low? What are you two waiting for? I'm in a coronia tree or so, but they know not how you going to want to bother eat along the creek. They're right along the creek they go up. So they're right there. It's sort of being a plum tree there. By the main trail. Leave it right up on a tree and change it. What would I be going before the sign? It, no, it's not a big, big, big one before the sign, but I, like, they, before, after they pass the sign, go back out to the river. Yeah. 
All right, see guys, these are the leaves that I'm telling you about, all right? Green. Red fruit leaves. You right here, guys? Oh, all green. Green. Yeah. yeah. These ant here, guys, take everything that falls in a row that they can put on the side. Oh, my gosh. All the little Look at that. Whatever falls in that tree. Look at what they're in these leaves. Yeah. Careful right here. Don't step in their path, guys. You're going to get bit if you step in their path. Step in their path. <laughs> Do not You'll get in there, highway. You'll find the trail of these leaves cut around, guys, sometimes two miles wow. Wow. away from that mump. You can see going yeah, on. you can see the path. Oh, no, they're all over here. Oh, there's another path. I don't want to step on it. And it's not just any leaf these ants get, guys, like that tree. When they're harvesting leaf off it, they go all the way up in the top to get their wow. leaf. Not like they just pick a leaf off off the forest floor and they go Look at the, the I mean, it's like a road. Yeah. Look at the path they made. Yeah, wild. And all these holes, are these all for those crabs? All blue land crab. There's okay. One crab in the bottom of each of these holes. <laughs> now, now yesterday we saw... There's the path again. Mm -hmm. They're like lobsters of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. Okay. They're like lobsters of the rainforest. They're bottom feeders. They, you know, whatever they run into. Wow. See this right here, guys? This is where the leaf cut around. Even though these ant guys bring the leaf back to the nest, they do not eat the leaf. They plant a fungus on it and feed in the fungus that goes on that leaf. After they finish feeding on the fungus, they then take the leaf back out their nest. That's the leaf they plant the fungus on. Oh my gosh, so they harvest their own yeah, they little farmers. Yeah, they're vegetarian ant or farmer ant. They grow their own food they eat. Scientists try to grow the fungus that the leaf cutter ant feeds on, and it do not grow anywhere else but inside that monk. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. These look at the size of that These ants are so smart that they put ventilation that leaks out the poison gas from killing them out. Damn. You can see the little holes all over it. Yeah, see Jenny. Little, those are little vents. Uh, the ant can come out and also the gas can come look out. Here. So this, this whole thing is the nest? This whole thing has a few million ants in it. <laughs> <laughs> look at they're coming out of that hole right yeah. there. And see the little holes everywhere for venting? Some days, guys, you see those trails where they're coming in that nest to the back there? Some days the entire tree will look like it's just a green vine. The ant covered the entire width of the tree and every ant have a leaf. That's when it's going to rain. Like oh, they know it's going to rain for a week or two. You see these ants being so busy for two, three days getting in all that food. Dude, this whole thing is... That is a big bamboo tree. Oh my god. Hey, you ever seen some bamboo stands like this? Look at this bamboo. Giant green bamboo. See the length of the joints? That's the length of what a bamboo is estimated to grow per day in the first two to three months. Eight to twelve inches. I know, that's what I was just thinking. <laughs> wow, and look ahead, like, y y if you look through here, there's like, wow. all these stands. Yeah. You'll see. This bamboo forest, guys, was as thick, as thick as the top as it is Look on the bottom of the four iris. As thick as what? It was as thick in the top as it is on the bottom. Oh. It was like you're hiking in a big cave before that hurricane where it was so dense. Oh. So in 2001 they had a really terrible hurricane it was completely wiped out. All these forests, there's nothing here in 20 years. Look ago, at it's how cool. Back. Look at this. And it becomes like this canopy because the leaves are so thick. It becomes like a dome. Yeah. yeah. Did he go through here? He did. Okay. Don't leave us up. Yeah. I don't think we're going to have this. Oh, See, any of these bamboo guys, they'll find this brown part wrapped around the trunk. That's a young shoot less than three months old. Like this shoot right here is about a week and a half old top. See the length of the joints? Yeah. That's the length of what they're estimated to grow per day. You'd find some bamboo long, lot longer joints than others. It all depends on what time of the year that shoot pops the forest floor. It goes twice as fast in the wet season than this time of the year in the dry season. 
The more water a bamboo gets, the faster it grows. Legs of one of the big crab weight on there. Not gonna try to get that one. <laughs> oh, I can see it though. Yeah. If you Fine, look down in there, enough. you can see it. Yeah, there are these plants that look like house plants. Yeah, these dip in bucket. You gotta be careful over here in the wet season, guys. There are hundreds of these blue crab running around in the forest floor in the wet season. When the hole gets full up with water, the crab can stay two, three hours underneath the water, but it must come out of the water to breathe. So in the middle of the wet season, when the forest floor has a couple inches of water, you'll find those blue crab climbing tree trunks to get out the water. Oh, wow. And at that time, you'll find a bunch of guys over here in the rainforest <laughs> catching those crabs. I bet. They're a delicacy over here. Are you allowed to catch them anytime? Yeah, but you can't catch them anytime. <laughs> right. <laughs> seasonal. Otherwise, we tried a bunch of times as kids. You fill it up with water before yeah. the crab come out to need to come out to breathe. The water dry out the hole. Are these mushrooms uh, poisonous or edible? To be honest, no one is exactly sure. <laughs> <laughs> Over here in the wet season, when all these logs are wet and moist, the rainforest floor lights up with fungus and mushrooms, all different color, shape, and size. We even have a mushroom over here grows like maybe a foot and a half around and about 18 inches. Oh, wow. Guys pop them and hold them up as mini umbrella in the wet season. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, we don't know which mushroom is edible from which isn't, so no one eats it. But uh, <laughs> one day, I had a guy who took a bite off like 20 different mushrooms we saw. I'm like, man, we don't eat these mushrooms. Some of them are poisonous. He's like, if it's poisonous, it's gonna taste funny. Oh my God. I'm like, buddy, wouldn't that be too late? He's like, ah, he's <laughs> no. out. Maybe he knew what he was doing. I ran into him at about three, four days after and he was still alive. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And that day, at least three of them, he spot out. He's like, ah, that one didn't taste right. Oh. I have no idea what, which one would taste right from wooden, so I don't eat any. Right, <laughs> man. Yeah. What? Boy, those wasps you saw, or hornets, or whatever, those things look nasty. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I want to know. If I, you know, I'm, if you're gonna run into something, I'm glad it was the, the you know, the tree and not the wasps. Not the wasps. I hope I got. I hope I got if you slam me, right. whack him Because you literally walked right into it. <laughs> Just bang. You no, know, guys, but uh. 1978, when the British and the explorer arrived black. Or if you're wearing black, just bring something like a towel or something to cover your, your clothes up when you're in the jungle. Now from here, the boat is real close. So now we're four or five minutes at the boat. Okay. Oh, that was so cool. Yeah, that was great. That was so cool. Did you get some good remember, pictures? Again, the same one you bump your head off. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get some good pictures? Thanks. You put a little sign on it. Watch your Did you get good pictures? Yeah, good video too. Good. Yeah, got a lot of good video. That, yeah, that is the branch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he moved it for you. Oh, thanks. Because <laughs> you straight bonked. Oh yeah, you can smell that. Yeah. Smell that livestock. That's the way they mark their territory. <laughs> A lot of times, guys, when you get the monkeys to roar, they try to pee or poo on you. Oh. <laughs> so when you get the monkey to roar, don't stand directly beneath it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we weren't directly under it. 
That's always a good laugh for you, huh? No. <laughs> you ever seen it happen? A bunch of times. Whenever, <laughs> whenever someone get pee or poo on, most tour guides would say, man, that's good luck. No good luck. That's awful. <laughs> that's a good spin on you it, though. You got a spin. I was just going to say, <laughs> most guys, when they get back to the river, when they get poo on, most guys would jump in, try and wash off. But if you don't have a change of clothes, it will have that monkey smell for the rest of the day. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, it's very smelly. <laughs> oh, man. There's white leaves, like. We're almost back to the boat, guys. Oh, this was great. Oh, so this cool. was awesome. See right here? It's palm like these, uh, they would choose as the yeah, weapon. Yeah. Whoa. Right. Longer spikes in that one, too. So. Oh, man. Yeah, I want no part like of that. With a cactus, yeah. yeah, right? What are these on the ground? These Are they nuts of some sort? Those like are the that? same cahoon nuts that all the guys use as cooking oil. Oh, okay. Yeah. The cahoon nuts, they have uh, critters in the rainforest that wants to feed on it, like pak and agouti, big rodent. But the plump, over the plump, it's that shell makes it impossible to get to it. Yeah. But between the hard shell and the husk, there's always a fleshy part. So that's what the rodent feeds on at nighttime. The fleshy parts between the hard shell and the husk of the cahoon. My problem is I can't look up oh, yeah, for the monkeys. The, yeah. I'll let you do that. Because <laughs> I trip when I try to look up and walk. That's why you ran into that branch as you were looking down. You never what? First time, never heard of a land crab. You no. The bigger the hole, guys, the bigger the crab. See, that's a humongous crab lived on that Whoa. one. But it's way down there. Yeah. And he doesn't want to lose a finger. No, you get pinched by it. It would burst your finger, but it'll never take off your finger. See, those are the cahoon nuts. Oh, yeah, they right there. Oh, the wow. Store. So those are different than the palm oil ones. It's the same palm oil nut, just that they're in the big bunches before they fall off. See yeah. all the stalks? Yeah. See the fruits? See the nuts on the right side? It's just where they fall off the big bunches. Oh, got it. They say, man, you need tons of it those things to make like a liter of oil. That's what I was going to, uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, World War I, Belize was governed by the British. And the British exported tons of those nuts. They made charcoal from the shell, used the charcoal as filters and gas masks. Wow. They okay. also made soap from the plump of the nut in World War I. Yeah. Mayans over here in Belize, they would go to, uh, they wouldn't harvest like a big palm like this. They would look for the little bit smaller palm, but they would cut the canopy of the palm in two with a chainsaw, take out the heart of the palm. It's a delicacy for them to eat mm -hmm. it. They call it cahoon cabbage. Oh, so yeah. these palm trees are served for many different purposes over here in Belize. They, uh, we have these oh. See, it's a palm mm -hmm. like that one right there, like one that size. Guys would hack yeah, it down at, because it's so off. easy. It, it mm -hmm. doesn't have a big trunk and get out the heart of the palm. Are those the palm noodles? That yeah, we, yeah. Have, we, we have these noodles they make out of uh, heart, heart of, of palm. palm. Yeah, it's yeah. those same palm trees. Mm. Wow. Okay, they're delicious. Yeah. Now we know. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta see where they come from, mm -hmm. where, they, where they produce them. Careful right here again, guys. For the low branch. Jenny. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing worse when you're not you looking. Know, see it, yeah. All of a sudden, bam. Yeah. It's like somebody hit you. Because you don't even face. brace for it. Yeah. <laughs> did you get it on your head or to hit like your forehead? Oh, right. just right on the top. Okay. You okay? Yeah, no, I didn't. Oh, there's the river. Great. And the largest growing trees we have in Belize. Canopy structure can get 275 to 350 feet. Oh, oh is that monkeys? No, you remember that? No. Day? Those are vultures. You what are they? Vultures. Like oh, that. I Where see. Where the trunk is that big and no other tree branch leads towards the trunk. The trunk are branches of that tree. So there's your vultures and stuff there? That's the tree of life. That, I mean, that's the tree of life right there. I mean. The nest of a Montezuma oropendula. A big brown bird, have bright yellow feathers beneath the tail, locally known as yellow tail bird. A oropendula build their nest so strong, so that way they don't have to build a new nest each year. They just return oh. to the same old nest and repair that nest. 
It's him hanging. Some folks would call them weaver birds. Because of the way they weave their nests, it takes hurricane force wind to blow the nest of those that rependula out the canopy of that tree. Wow. It's just the male or rependula that weaves those nests. So that way when the male build a nest and his female, his maiden partner wouldn't like the nest the male built for her, she will then rip that nest all down <laughs> and the male will just have to build her a new nest. <laughs> or rependula like they made for life. I have no divorce in that marriage. So when the male get a picky wife, he's stuck with her until one of them pass away. Wow. It takes a male or a pendula three to seven days to complete one nest starting from scratch. How many? How many? Three, to three to seven. And it takes an angry female oh. 20 to 30 minutes to rip that <laughs> nest out of the canopy of the tree. Sounds right. It's about right. <laughs> <laughs> the male bird just sit in a branch, watch his female destroy all his hard work, oh and immediately start constructing her a new nest. So even for those birds, tough life living with a wife. <laughs> return to this tree in say five, six months from now, there'll be at least a hundred to two hundred nests hanging off that tree. Wow. Oh wow! They just start rebuilding nests on that tree again, like a month ago, say tops. They're social birds, they'll never find one nest, they'll always be a community. More of these proboscis or long nosed bats right here again. All the bats are on there. You see them in the log right here, this big log across from us. Right here. Oh yeah, there they are. They're really hard to see. Yeah, they're very camouflage. Yeah. It's rare to right spot the them in a living trunk like that, on a clear trunk like that one we saw them earlier. Yeah. yeah that's right. Right on the Whoa! Oh, wow! <laughs> 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 Did you Did you see that? Yeah, Right there. Oh my God. Oh, look at him. Nice job, Jenny. Good job. Still right there. Yeah, he's, he didn't die. Still see the shadow of it. Look like the nose on a on a dog or something. Uh, mm -hmm. it's like a muzzle. Right. <laughs> Closest living relative to a man you guys is an elephant, which I find to be weird. I know. Right? I would think more a seal or a sea lion instead of an elephant. Right, or a walrus or yeah. something. Gestation period for a manatee though takes over 13 months. Wow. wow. And the cup stays along in the mother for about two and a half, three years. So it'll be within another four to six years before they have another young. Makes them easy to go extinct. Wow. Over here in Belize, over five to eight years, Audubon Society of the Forestry <laughs> Department. They do manatee come from year plan. 2011, they conquered over 1,100. Wow. They made Belize a country with the healthiest population in the Caribbean, or pretty much in the world. They do it from an airplane. From an airplane. It's easier to spot them from an airplane than from right here off the surface of the water. Yeah. Still right there. They ever get injured by boats? They do get hit by boats. Yeah. Juvenile manatees like this that are unaware of danger would come this close to a boat. Actually, they're not really afraid of the boat if you're not. You guys can see it? He's still right there. Like 10 feet away from the boat. He's just turned away. He's just staying low, huh? Yeah, or high. He's staying a few feet beneath the surface. He's going deeper that one. But he'll have to come back up here in a second. It is coming up again right here. Oh, you can see it right there coming up. Oh, yep, there he is coming to the surface right there. Roll, where you should oh, see yeah. the tail. There see? he is. Oh, she's going to roll. <gasps> wow. Oh, that's a great view. You yeah. just think those were mermaids. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Guys, we've been out to sea too long. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> good rum, too, man. <laughs> good rum. <laughs> we got a full body. Yeah. Not just not his nose on that one. Yeah. And he's not a very big one. No, it's a good one. 
mult mai este.